Hey everyone, it's me RGB guy back with another video and in today's video we are going to learn about ambient occlusion. So the first question that we need to answer is what is ambient occlusion? If you are in a room with a light source and if you observe the corners of the room, right? The corners where the walls and the ceiling connect each other, basically this corner, right? If you observe this corner and these edges where the walls meet, you would observe that the lighting on this particular slot, this is darker than rest of the scene. So in order to replicate this effect in computer graphics, we have something called ambient occlusion. Now, why does this take place? Why does this occur? Why do the corners and edges look darker than the rest of the scene? This is majorly because the amount of light that falls on these areas is lesser because the light rays are obstructed by the walls and the ceiling. So when the light rays try to come, they are obstructed. They are obstructed by the corners and that's why the light that reaches these areas is lesser compared to the rest of the flat wall. We understood what ambient occlusion is and also why it happens. Now let's understand how ambient occlusion affects the game. So let's compare two scenes. This scene is without ambient occlusion and this particular scene is with ambient occlusion. If you observe the areas in the bottom, you would see that the color of these areas is same as this, right? But in this particular scene, the color of these areas, the color of this area, it's darker than the rest of the scene. If you observe around these areas as well, you'll see that the area with ambient occlusion is darker than the area with without ambient occlusion. So how it affects the game? It makes your game look more realistic. Now let's try to understand the algorithm behind ambient occlusion. So if I have a point here and I want to say that it's ambiently occluded, basically this point is darker than rest of the scene to determine how dark this area is. I need to identify if this area is occluded by the pixels around it. Now, how do we identify if a particular pixel is occluded by the pixels around it? When you render a scene, you can enable depth testing and enabling depth testing will render, render the Z values to a depth buffer. So for those who do not know what a depth buffer is, a depth buffer is just an image with the value of each pixel corresponding to how far it is, how far that pixel is from the camera. This is an example depth buffer. Each pixel corresponds to how far this particular point is from the camera. For example, this floor is very close to the camera, hence it's white. This is far away from the camera, hence it's dark. So this is depth buffer. So to implement ambient occlusion, we rendered a depth map where each point corresponds to how far this pixel is from the camera. Now what we are going to do is we are going to sample points around this pixel. Let's zoom in a bit. So we are going to sample points around this pixel. Now let's say the depth value of this particular point is D0. This is D1, D2, D3 and so on. So what we would do is, so for all the points, for all D1, D2, D3, we compare these values with D0. If D0, which is the depth value of the center point is lesser than the depth value of D1. If D0 is lesser than D1, that means roughly D0 is occluded by D1. And hence, let's have a variable called occlusion and we would add to this variable. We would do this step for all the points in the vicinity. So the more number of points occlude this D0, the more is the occlusion value. And now you can use this occlusion value to multiply it with the ambient color. Now what is ambient color? Ambient color is color due to ambient light. Now you would ask what is ambient light? If there is no light in your room, if you switch all the lights off, still there would be some light coming out, coming from a window, right? There would be some small light, which is not a direct light ray, but it lights up the atmosphere in some way. So that is ambient light. So we multiply this one minus occlusion term with the ambient color. So if the occlusion is zero, then the ambient light would be added completely. If the occlusion is one, then there would be no ambient light. Yeah. So this is the algorithm behind ambient occlusion. But there is a big problem here. In the previous step, we were sampling values from all the points in the surrounding and then comparing the depth. Now, if you do that for all the pixels, it's a heavy operation, right? And at least for static meshes, the meshes that are not going to change. 
if i have a 3d model i know all the points of the 3d model i can calculate how different parts of this 3d model impact different other parts of this 3d model basically i can calculate an ambient occlusion map for this 3d model so if we have a texture map which is an ambient occlusion map what we can do is instead of sampling values and then calculating the occlusion term we could directly sample the value from this occlusion map and occlusion map is again a texture so here is an example of ambient occlusion map so this first image is the original model this is the ambient occlusion map and when you apply this ambient occlusion map on this model this is how your mesh looks there are various ways to extract an ambient occlusion map from a model i'm not going to go into depths of that to just give you an overview you can use any kind of 3d modeling software like blender or maya or max to actually bake the ambient occlusion map you can even bake shadow maps light maps immersive maps you can make all kinds of map from these 3d modeling softwares you can take a look at those tutorials but i just wanted to explain what ambient occlusion map is and how it optimizes the implementation of ambient occlusion if you understood what ambient occlusion is please hit the subscribe button if you have any suggestions regarding the videos that i'm making please post them in the comments and i'll make sure that i read and make changes accordingly till then take care have a nice day bye bye